it is the only way for them to maintain uh, some yeah. internal logic with their idea that uh, infringing upon um, uh, private property is uh, is 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 the uh, the worst thing that could ever happen in the world. No, 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 no. You just don't listen. The initiation of the use of force and coercion is what leads to the worst things that could happen in society. See, you complain about not having any small libertarians on your show. But despite all the libertarians you've debated, you still do not even understand or grasp the basics of libertarian philosophy, which speaks more to your comprehension skills rather than the logic of the libertarian principle in general. Even though I do not agree with status ideologies, by having debated and actually listening to the people I was debating, I understand the status philosophy inside and out and would never come out in public demanding someone to explain to me the status ideology when also a simple Google search would save me the trouble. It's something called preparation and doing background research on your debate opponents and the fact that you don't seem to know how to do that make me question whether you've engaged in the debate altogether. You may have gotten into shouting matches and mindless conversations with people but I seriously doubt that you've engaged in a serious debate and the philosophers you mentioned consider you an unworthy adversary of the worst kind. See, it's hard to debate someone who does not have the mental capacity and processing power to merely comprehend your perspective. You seem like a smart guy, so instead of simply attributing this failure on your mental capacities, I will go one step further and say that it's simply the state-sponsored programming you've experienced in government-sponsored schools that make you blind to the fact that your government is obsolete. You mention property rights as if they are peripheral to a meaningful and purposeful life, but in truth they are fundamental to what we call a civilized life. There are only two ways to interact in this world with other people. You can either come to agreements and exchange voluntarily or you can simply take their stuff by force. These are the only two means of interaction possible, you understand? And the libertarians believe that all of society needs to be based on the first means of interaction, which is voluntary exchange, and all forced and coercive interactions should be eliminated where possible. See, you talk about property rights like it's just your rights to own a house, a car, and stuff like that. But your property rights boil down to your right to own your own body and the products of your labor. Libertarians do not want the government taken away. We don't want the services, the infrastructure, and a lot of what's provided taken away. All we want is for the government and those same services to be paid for voluntarily without everyone being forced to pay or else. How can we claim to have property rights when someone else can lay claim to all of the products of our own labor perpetually because we are within a specific geographical area? How is this logical, smart guy? Before, I mean, I had that, that Stefan Malu, supposedly like... He's supposed the, to be like the, the most the, smartest the, the, libertarian, uh, yes. the most liberty liberal loving yes. libertarian. Yes, and this is a guy who told me that we could basically eradicate social ills by paying parents to raise their kids better. As if only poor people's kids had social ills down the road. The point of saying that paying parents to be better to their children will eradicate most of society's ills is probably true because one, people respond to incentives, and two, bad parenting is the cause of the vast majority of crimes and antisocial behavior. The, f the first is the widely accepted economics principle, which is that people do respond to incentives. You're not going to debate that. And the second is a well-established scientific fact backed by miles of research and data, which is that the majority of crimes and antisocial behavior are caused by bad parenting or neglect as children or traumatic experiences as a child. Now, will you deny either of these are facts? Well, then when you put these two facts together, why would it not make sense that providing incentives for parents to be better to their children would actually be the solution to the vast majority of crimes and antisocial behavior? The libertarian you had on, who said he, he thought if some states wanted slavery, that they should be able to do it? Well, see, he said that with the caveat that they are not the only state present and there are no state monopolies, which he failed to process. The conversation was delving into theoretical, and theoretically speaking, the society which operates on slavery will be much less powerful, efficient, and desirable to live in than a free state.
so it would be hard to imagine a sustainable state which operated on slavery, which is why even today they do not exist. The United States was able to get to the level of power that it has by having the freest government since the dawn of man. But now the problem we face is that the wealth has also in turn created the biggest government in human history, which is the cause of the imperialism. So the point here is not to say that slavery is morally justified or that slavery is a good thing. But if you have a system where there is no monopoly on the use of force, there is no monopoly on coercion, and there is no monopoly on how government services will be provided, there will be no incentive for anybody and there will be no real reason why a society that's based on slavery would flourish. But see the thing is what you do on your show to a lot of the libertarians that come on to talk to you with some common sense is you pick the worst of their arguments. Or you just pick one line out of the argument instead of putting it together with everything else that was said and you just run with it trying not to see what is being explained to you I will say this one more time I beg and plead often if there is a smart libertarian out there they won't bother because they know what to expect on your show you will always dodge the facts and fail to grasp the arguments presented which is why to this day even though you've debated several libertarians you still have no idea about the basics of libertarian philosophy to me that's proof that you really were not engaged in the debate you weren't even listening you just wanted to prove your point you already have a mindset you already have a belief system and you will only jump on whatever that is said that you could easily use to defend your pre-existent philosophy or mindset so none of the smart libertarians are gonna bother with you